Welcome to another episode of Rusted Up Garage, where we have Steve here, who's going to teach us and show us how to install these things in this thing. So if you've always been thinking to myself, self, I have a 10 bolt rear end, 8.5, 8.5. And I want to take the um, really long gears out and put some other gears in. But I don't know how. This is your video. Because Steve is going to take these things right here and put them in there. And he guarantees these for life. to never blow up. No, that ain't the truth at all. But anyways, he's going to put these gears in. The uh, car came with um, 293s. So we can do about 285 miles an hour in second gear. Um, no problem. But to get there would have been like 45 minutes. So we're putting the two uh, 373s in it, or 372s, or they're a 370 version of the gear. And uh, we're going to just slam them in the back. So she'll just set you back in your seat like that. It's going to be like, ow, like that. So, and then the other thing we're going to do while we're in there, because we're not, you know, we're of the older, cool generation that when we spin tires, we want them both to do this. Not just the old one wheel peel, I think I'm cool in my 86 clapped out Camaro, okay? We're gonna go ahead and install this, what's known in the biz as a Spartan locker. Also known as a lunchbox locker from what I was told from Steve. But anyways, I have no idea how to do gears. I'm just gonna throw that one out there. Gears are not my forte. I couldn't, I'd get them in there and then howl like an old howler. But Steve, on the other hand, is very good at it. He, th this is what he does um, on the side, like at night, weekends and stuff. He actually has a little side business where he does uh, all the rear end work. He can set up any set of gears for you. If you're looking for someone to set up gears, um, you know, uh, you don't have a number. I I'll put a place down below where you can get a hold of him somehow. But if you're local around here, look for someone. The other thing Steve does, is he is, um, he does a lot of four wheel drive stuff. So he does like axle installs and stuff. Maybe on your Jeep, you want to put one ton of axles under it, or, you know, maybe you have a little Geo Metro you want four wheel drive. He can do it. So um, Steve's a really good fabricator. He does, Steve, uh, he does rear ends fabrication on four wheel drive stuff. So I'm lucky enough to get him to come over for the weekend and help out for a few minutes and, uh, you know, throw the gears in the back of the old, the old wizard wagon here. And uh, he don't talk much, though. You think Zach don't talk much? Steve don't talk much. So what, what, what's going to happen here is we're going to, you know, put you on a pod, or Zach's going to kind of look around, show you what he's doing, and then I'll probably be in the background, and I'll just kind of talk you through what he's doing. But at least you'll have a good visualization of what he's doing. Now, I pulled everything apart. It's in a bucket all clean. And I mean, he comes right here and he's ready for work. I mean, he don't chat like I do. You know, I'm just we're just talking a lot. I'm like, that's what I do. Steve don't talk. He's just not a talker, but he's a doer. So these gears are going to soon be the spinning gear in that bad boy. So although he told me that I can't do safety burnouts until we break them in, which is kind of sad because that means I got to break them in before we can do safety burnouts. For safety. So, well, without further ado, I'm gonna have Zach just you know peel over here at the parts. So we got you know all new bushings, bearings, slides, and adjusters and things and paintbrush. It comes with a paintbrush. I mean, because that's for painting. And uh, the old lunchbox, the old gears, and um, and then we got a big you know a big empty hole back here where Steve's gonna install some parts. So there we go, people. Be sure to tune in. And I also forgot to tell you, like and subscribe. I mean, that's what's gonna build the channel. And then you'll get, maybe we'll get Steve on one day to uh, actually maybe show us how you put a rear end in something, like a big four wheel drive truck. Cause that's, you know, again, what he does. So, but you want stuff like that done, hit him up. He does it all on the side. Rear end work. And uh, I don't know his name of this company is. I think it's called Steve's Rear Ends. So, uh, but whatever, I mean, it's something. 
The shit don't really have a name, but it's, that's what I call it. Excited. This is my excited face. Okay, so what you see happening here is um, Steve has this really cool tool, and he's going to pull the uh, bearing off from the old pinion because he wants the shim that's underneath it. So he has a starting shim. Uh, so, I don't know, it's like a, I guess the bearing puller. It's a fancy bearing puller. Yeah, that's what, that's what it's called. Fancy bearing puller. But uh, once he gets the uh, shim off from it, he's going to put the shim on the new pinion, and then he will install the pinion into the housing, which you're going to see here in a minute. And that'll be his starting reference. Um, later on in the video, he actually pulls the um, pinion back out, the new pinion, and he pulls the bearing off from it and um, changes shims because it didn't um, it didn't pattern out like he wanted it to pattern out. So, but it's just yeah, it's really cool how this thing works. It just goes right around that bearing and then just whoop. And a little air gun action, bing bing, and uh, there it is. It's just uh, it's it's off. Now this one is kind of old and crunchy, up with the um, yoke hooks. You can see the uh, crush sleeve there, and uh, and stuff, and it kind of sticks. So we have to, you know, get a hammer and you know get after it a little bit, but. Again, that don't matter because we're not reusing any of that stuff. All that goes away in this uh, in this setup. So he's just gonna whack the old uh, bearing off because again, we don't need it. Might as well, you know, throw it in the trash where it belongs. And uh, there is the shim, and uh, I think it's like thirty-six or some. I think it's thirty-six thousandths or something like that. I think we end up getting back down to like 26, I think is at the end. I think we end up changing that to a 26 is just out too much. He wanted less pinion um, sticking outing, outer. I don't, that ain't even a word. I don't even know what I'm talking about. He didn't want the pinion out as far, so he had to suck it in more. So so later on you'll see. Now he's um banging the bearing on here. Why? Because... Um, I didn't have a press for him, so he had to do that. And now he's speed um, sanding here because, you know, he likes to clean and sand stuff. So he, he went ahead and did that here. Actually, he was trying to get rid of the ridges, make sure there was nothing there, get a feel for it, make sure it was clean. he took the um, bearing off the other one and now he's filing this out because Steve likes to file and smooth out all the edges he hates rough edges it's just a Steve thing edit that oh, yeah. Just... yeah is that not big enough on the one is that not big enough that, that don't work for that that's not for that it's not okay. no. it should be 
need a bigger punch now? Probably. I think I'm moving it on down. Huh? She's moving. She's almost there. I think she's there. Hear the tone change. And I'm back again. As Steve um, puts all the bolts in the um, ring onto the carrier. And he starts snugging them all up with the air gun. And then he's going to torque them up here in just a minute. But it's getting closer to being a rear end. No, those are thread. They are left-handed thread. That's right, Zach. See? And I barely hit them, you saw. They don't actually need to be that tight. 65 foot pounds. I got some out of that. Yeah, 65 is not that tight on like a, on a long ratchet. It's not that much. I got them all up. I should work all of them around in a circle. I pulled this factory shim back off. That brochure does tell you what the OEM, typical OEM shim was. It's 37. So you use the same you it had the OEM a, shim? The OEM shim. New crush leaf. No, I'm not. No, I'm just checking pattern. I'm not putting crush leaf on it. Nothing yet. No silver. So you take nothing. it back apart? Absolutely, you have to. Okay, so you take the first shim, put it in, and tighten it up. So with just the shim, the stock shim is pulled off. You just bring it in without a crush sleeve or without a without a seal. Without a seal, right. And then you just bring it in so you feel it about where it needs to be. Yeah, and still a little bit loose. Okay. And then you will put this carrier in mm -hmm. and run a pattern. Right. And see what it looks like, and then you can make your Feel that drag right there. there. I go a little bit tight. It needs to be with the seal in it, I'm going a little bit tighter then. With the seal dragging on it, huh? Come on, look on the new bearing. Okay. This is making sense to me now. This is uh, see. This is what I told you that I weren't. I mean, you were ready for this. I want to see what you're doing. So now those sit up against the axle tubes themselves. Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't you just make that tight? Make it tight. Yeah. So like. Well, it doesn't. It can't just be tight. It's got to be. You're moving the carry the ring gear in and out of the pinion. That's your backlash. The backlash being the slack in between the gears. You want on a street car, eight thousandths. Round track cars, I'll open them up. You know, say eight to twelve. Probably better ten to twelve. Where's that dead plug? Case spreader goes in these ear holes right here, and you actually, it's an apparatus with a screw, two bars up, and you actually spread this case and you can drop these in and let back off of it. I don't have one of those. I'll get one. Make one. Factory shims in. Yeah. You wanted to pull in back on to bring them down with or something? Or something. Yeah, yeah something. It don't I mean, matter. I need to be a little bit. Yeah. 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 Whatever makes you feel better. I'm here for you. Whatever makes you feel better. Actually, you're here for me. Hmm. Hmm. 
Are they going to fit? I showed, told you guys before, not showed you. Um, he uh, didn't really like where the pinion was sitting by the feel, so he decided to bring out the old jigicles and uh, you know just go ahead and, and read on them. And then he, he's going to measure the pinion height, and he's going to do some more of the maths and stuff. And this is what determined that he didn't like the 36, and I believe this is when he went to the 26. I think you'll see us popping the uh, um, bearing back off, and he's going to uh, change that to get the backlash right. No, the backlash the other direction, but you get the idea. He, he was just he was doing maths on this, is what he was basically doing. Wow. So, you really need that tool to do this job. This is daylight, no, oh, this saves you so much work. Did you just get that tool? Yeah, yeah, it was donated. a benefactor. Yeah. I do. I'm gonna do I don't need this for this right here. I'm gonna go back home and go to sleep. Sorry. I was hoping this would be quick for you. Oh. No. No, no. We need the air gun. We need the air gun. Everybody, dad and them, they use that Mac one and all that and all. Everybody says my Mac Cohen is not that good. That Mac Cohen's as good as any. And like that, she's off. Sure was nice for Ryan to get you that. I know. He's a piece of my pet I know. I shouldn't have said his name. I know. He's going to be all embarrassed now. He's going to be embarrassed now. 
I didn't take that much. Yeah. yeah. It feels like, it looked like I did, it but I just slightly like just, yeah. just grazed it. Yeah. To blend it. How much light did you put on it? All of it? Oh, you already got a gooey for me? You pre prep? How much you want? Come on. Alright, hold on. Ready to bang the ceiling? Hmm? Ready to bang the ceiling? Yeah. While you were grinding on that? No. Oh. Awesome. A little bit more. You see that pinion is so loose on the splines, I definitely want to give it a chance at the ceiling, seeing as how it was leaking before, right? One more. That's good. Earthquake really did some. She's a New Britain. New Britain? Yep. Okay. Now you broke that thing one, two, three, four, five spots. package backwards of the way they go. It's really nice of them. They actually go like that. What's that part do? Hmm? What's that part do? That's what captures the C-clip. When you put the C-clip in, you slide it in. The cross pin sits in here. Yeah. The cross pin is what applies the pressure to lock this to the side gear. That's what actually loads it into the lock position. The rest of the time when it's not, your pins are actually spreading it. So technically any time that there's pinion or the, the cross shaft is putting pressure on it, it is maintaining lock up. Your C clip goes in through right here. So when it goes in, it goes onto the axle. You slide that over it and that locks it in, and then the cross pin won't let that come off, so that lock holds the C clip in. Okay. They're pretty neat the way they work, really. And then all those little parts. All on. these, yeah. All it does is these springs go in here on each one. And these are your retaining pins. Put them in, it's got that little slot down there. Totally did that backwards. I don't know why I did that. So that, that slot for installation purposes is there. I'm gonna scrub that all out. So then you take your pin, push it in, and it's locked in. And you, when you get them all in there, you can pull these out and poop it spreads it. Okay, so that's just to install. That's just to install. A lot better than lock right. Mark right, it was a pain. You had to get grease and all this stuff and slide pins across with the springs in it and then slide them back. And, but, you know, it's just, 
I mean, you can do it, it's just this is easier. So basically, you know, those go face to face. This pin, when it's spread out, is locked in that one, vice versa. So those are always out and locked in, that these are engaged together. Okay, so those much. will always be driven mm -hmm. together. But this spring action is what allows it, when this tire is trying to turn faster than the other tire in a corner and you're not applying power where the, the, the actual cross pin is spreading these, it's allowing, the, the springs in these are allowing them to just kind of sit neutral. It'll allow it to override it. It'll, it'll push in on that spring and let it override it. This will overcome because the pinion, the, it, I keep saying pinion, the cross shaft is not applying pressure in this grooved area. It's using a cam action here to keep it locked. That's what it's doing when you're under power. It's pulling on the cross pin. That's the whole unit together. These spread apart and lock your C clips in. And then the pinion goes through and holds them over. Cross shaft. <laughs> well, it didn't just go through two, it went through up there. So yeah, yeah, there's, well, a little burr. Like... there's a little burr in there or something. Yeah, it wouldn't go in, then it shot two inches out uh -huh. too far. Really? A drop forge? Really? Not on that. I thought you had good tools. No. I did, but not with that size. Actually, this is better than mine because it's a six point on the box. No, mine's 12. Yeah, I'm 112. It's torquer. All right. So, as you saw, we put that performance rear end in, and uh, how are people going to know this performance rear end? Well, I mean, obviously, I mean, you got to put a performance diff cover on. Let's move it in here. It's a little, it seems a little bright over there. We need it to dry, though. Uh, I know. So, the only thing I can think of, what we do is we take this spray here. Of course, you probably need to come on this side. It's, you know, that seems to be which direction it's hanging. And uh, we're just gonna, you know, we're gonna lay the aluminum on. Now you can tell, I mean, at this point, it's like bullet aluminum. I mean, people see this, they're gonna know. There's no doubt it's a performance rear ended. I mean, you can tell by the way that it is now. When that's on there, they're gonna know performance. That'll wrap up the, uh, the rear end video right there, pretty much, once I assemble that. But I just want to show you guys how you instantly make your rear end a high performance rear end. You just restore on it a little bit. Just make it aluminum. Okay, so, welcome to Rear Brakes 103. Uh, Normally, with the uh, amount of shoe left on these, I wouldn't necessarily change them normally. It's just me, even though they really are in rough shape. But the wheel cylinder right in here, it's pretty much leaking all the fluid out. On top of that, before we did the rear end, the rear seal back here was also leaking all of its fluid out. So these things are saturated in brake slash rear end dope. So at this point, they're going to pretty much delaminate themselves off from here, and we're not going to have anything for brakes. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to change on these, and I'm going to try to do my best to show you, you know, how I do them, which is not the right way, but it's a way. And then we're going to change the wheel cylinder, and uh, that's what we're going to do. So let's get started. We got... A new spring kit so all the springs and we got new shoes I got the riveted ones I like riveted rear shoes so 
see if I can do this with the you know, camera right here in my teeth. Probably not, but we're gonna do our best. What I normally do is uh, I start out by removing these two springs right here. Those springs pretty much hold this whole thing together. Now, there's a couple ways of doing this. They make a tool, and then they make vice grips. I prefer the vice grip method. And I just pretty much just clamp on the spring here, and I lift up and yank it off like that. See? Pretty simple. Then I come over to this second spring, put my vice grips on it, and I yank up and yank over, and pretty much remove on that one. Now, we can also come up on this emergency brake cable. Now, there is a spring down here, but if you actually pull this spring out like that, it'll help release that, and then you can pop this, this guy off right here, okay? Now, we're gonna move the little star keeper. Okay. And that's pretty much what holds these on, minus these two spring keepers, okay? So at that point, I'm gonna go ahead and push them with my needle nose pliers, and then I'm just gonna twist them off. Is that one. And over here. And I'm gonna release this one, same one. Now I can pull these off, and I can pull them out, and then you have a spreader bar, which is between the two. So I pull it off, keep it the same direction. I'm just gonna set it right here on the ground. We're gonna pull this back like this, and pop the emergency brake cable out. So there's the whole assembly right there. I'm just gonna set that over here. So now that that's all out, you can see it's, you know, it's pretty empty in there. Now, the wheel cylinder is that guy right there. And it's leaking. You can basically tell by the way that it is, the new wheel cylinder is not gonna come with these. So you're just gonna pull these little guys out and uh, see all the fluid? I don't know if you can see all the brake fluid coming out of that. It's just running out. It's, it's bad. And that one's gonna come out. Now on the back side here. Ugh, sorry about the camera work. On the back side here, we look up in here. There's a one brake line and two bolts. So I'm gonna get the brake line freed up, and then I'm gonna get the two bolts off. We'll pop the wheel cylinder out and we'll pop the new wheel cylinder in. This one's porn when I pull the thing out. Okay. So that's all been changed. I move you out here, you kind of see what I'm doing here. So now I'm just gonna kind of clean on this a little bit. Just gonna rejuvenate it. Now it's time for reassembly. You ever get these, sometimes your pads, not always, sometimes your shoes, I mean, are two different lengths. So you one's shorter, so you got primary and secondary pads, so the long one always goes to the back, short one always goes to the front. Okay. Boop. See if I can do this while on camera. 
This is a little more tricky because this side has the emergency brake on it. But we're gonna try to make this all work. The other side, this emergency brake is actually on the other side of the chute. So it's one less thing for you to have to try to get in on this side. Okay? Then you gotta get You just stay up in there like that. It might work for this. Sometimes this helps. Sometimes it don't. Oh, you know, I almost forgot. I almost forgot to put this bag in. I need these guys. These are the guys that do all the work. Okay, now, let's go back up here. Let's get that in there. Let's get this in there. And this up here like that, okay? I'm gonna slide this retainer in here like this. That's the emergency brake retainer. And that's gonna kinda help hold this thing for a second. Why we get these parts right here together. We get these parts together and these kind of slip together like this. Then you got this. You can hold all of this together and put it over top of this. Okay. This can get to be a pain in the butt. I've done several, so I'll just put that back in after. You get all that, hold that pin, right? And then you gotta put the spring on, and then you gotta put the little keeper on. And then you gotta hold it all together, and they make tools for this, and I use it. Wah! And then that happens. Normally I don't have that issue. I usually get these suckers first try. For some reason, this one's being a little bit of a pain. Put that spray back in, get that back up. Come on, you get back in there like that. Okay. This, then this. And sometimes you just have to do it this way. I'm just pushing with your finger and shove it through. But Told you this was the hard side. I weren't lying to you. Get in there. That's where you ride. Okay. just gonna fight me tooth and nail. Like that. Okay. So we just got that side. Now, the other side will be a whole lot easier. Except for I don't know which, you can't remember which way my self adjuster needs to go in. Because I just blew it apart on the ground. I'll 
we're going to put the spring in. And we're going to put this self adjuster in, which can be tricky in itself sometimes. But I find you just kind of bend it in there like that, kind of get it to go. And generally, it'll snap right in like that. Okay? Now we're going to put in this spreader bar on this side with its spring. And then we're going to put that all together like that. Okay. Now the spreader bar needs to go in. Like that. Now this side don't have to have all that extra stuff. Now on the other side, the emergency brake cable is part of the front. So it's less work to get that to spring on. Make sure all these keepers are in shoes all good. Just like that. Now, we got this little guy, which is part of the self adjuster, that we gotta get back in here, which I don't normally have to fall out early. This one did. And this self adjusts this wheel down here, like that. Okay? So now, this little spring will go on. And we got the little star thing. So we're gonna put this back together like this. Put the little star wheel on it. We're gonna pull this back and clip that on here. And then clip that on here, like so. Okay. And then the long spring goes in this hole and hooks up here. And this is what I use vice grips for normally. I'll just grab the vice grips like here. Make sure that's over enough. And just pull it up and clip it on. Like that. Now hold all that together. Okay. Now we're gonna grab the short spring. That one goes right in here. And that goes on the self-adjuster wheel right here. Okay. Same thing. Just pull it up into place. Like that. Okay, now the only other thing we got left is the self-adjuster spring itself, which goes up underneath here, and that goes in, and then you can kind of get it up on top of that, compress it in. Now, that right there goes down, it spins a little wheel, and I usually just kind of, you know, give them a little wiggle here, like that. And that's how you assemble rear shoes. Now I'm gonna put the drum on it and I'm gonna kind of feel it and I'm gonna run this wheel out until I get just a little bit of drag on this. When I'm spinning it, I want just a little bit of drag on these drums. And then I'm gonna bleed the rears, I'm gonna bleed the fronts and get all that done. So I'm hoping that was a, a little bit helpful. And as you can see, it's all back together. The self adjusters. Oh. Maybe that'll help one of you guys out.